what's the what's the uh, a couple big mistakes you see people make when they're using their trail cameras? Uh, me, it's uh, when people put those cameras, even if it's in steel boxes, down low and about four feet up. And right in the trail that that deer is going to go down, I I stumbled across one once, and I was just like, it's, it's literally in the deer's face. You think it's not going to realize the flash, much less the smell that'll stay on there for like a month or two. Um, and the other mistake I know is huge for for actual people using trail cameras is because they don't see deer on the trail camera. They don't think the deer are using it. Perfect. Uh, I I kind of feel for every picture of a, a, a deer that you're getting, you're missing six other ones because there's so many other trails, so many other found. That's huge. Uh, one time I had a, a cell cam out and I threw a opening day deer hunt in there. I was getting a few deer here and there. But I just knew that these white oaks were dropping, and uh, I went and put a sit in there. I had 19 deer around me, and that cell camera only got two. Now, if I didn't hunt that, I would have thought, well, there was only two deer that came through that area because they are all over. Um, that was uh, a real eye-opener to me. So just because you're not seeing them on the trail camera doesn't mean they're not there. So those are probably my two. Big yeah, I, I fully agree with you there, Gary. Um, far, I mean, no matter how many trail cams you run, you still have to kind of trust your scouting and your gut sometimes because uh, I have I have that happen all the time where you're like, oh, well, you know, there's only two year old bucks or, you know, uh, just does in here. And then you go in and throw a sit and you see, a, you know, you see a good buck and you can't just rely on trail cams, uh, you know, solely. You have to still have, you know some, some woodsmanship and some scouting involved as well that you put together with your trail cam. And then you, you kind of put the puzzle pieces together. Um, one other thing though, like just for people hanging the cams that I see is they make their own screw in mounts from the hardware store and, uh, with like metal pieces on the bottom. Right. And then they'll spray paint over it, but that spray paint kind of wears off and then it's shiny. It, like you have like a little shiny uh, piece of metal up there on the bottom of it. And those stick out like a sore thumb to me. So uh, oh. I know you guys, it, I understand saving a buck. And, uh, you know, if that's the only thing you got, it works. But uh, uh, to me, uh, that would be, you know, I don't want something shiny given my location away. That'd be the worst thing that I, I feel like I could do to try to hide it. So, yep. Another thing I would, those are all good points, guys. But something else I would say is like people don't plan out how they're going to come in and check them um, efficiently as far as not getting sent on trails, you know, walking, having to walk into a, uh, or around a bedding area that, you know, your scent's going to blow into all those kind of things. People tend to forget about whenever they're hanging a trail camera, especially in the summertime when you're nonchalantly walking through the woods, you know, um, you got to really think about how I'm going to get in here and check this without making much disturbance. One more thing too. Mo most people don't put enough stock into historical data. Um, I've killed two or three nice bucks off historical data. And yeah. if you, if you only hunted a season based off of, if you ran 30 cams and you only pick spots based off of the previous year's movement in each of those spots, eventually you're going to run into a nice buck. So, I mean, uh, you know, it's not that simple. You still have to plan your entrance routes and you still have to make sure your wind and thermals are right. But if you just, if you specifically just jumped around based off historical data, uh, those big bucks, as they get older, their habits, start, their habits are what are the, usually are the only chink left in their armor because their core area shrinks so much that, uh, you know, the only, the only way that you can kill them is to figure out what they, what, what some kind of pattern. And sometimes it's not a pattern within a couple of days where you can get a cell cam pick and then go in there after them because they've already been there. But if you can figure out where they were last year and go back in there and get on them, um, that's, that's like your biggest ally. Yeah. Uh, I kind of feel that different dole groups come in to eat at different times of the year. I've, I found areas where they already started coming into heat in mid October and then other areas it isn't until like November 10th. Um, so 
a lot of times the does that are born in that area will a lot of times stick around that area and their young will follow the same kind of estrus pattern. Um, so, you know, we have early season rut, I should say early rut areas and late rut areas. I don't know if you guys have ever noticed that on your trail cams. Um, oh, but yeah. I did a, a study once, uh, elbow surgery so i went through all my pictures in indiana i was trying to pick out the week during rut i wanted to go by josh for some hunting so i took all my pictures and did a study to see when the most buck movement was and that was really interesting uh november 4th i believe it was was the the number one day the number two day was november 3rd that kind of helped me to say, hey, if I'm going to hunt rut in Indiana, at least by Josh, this is what about time I'd like to be there for all day sits. If you want to watch another video, click right here. But don't forget to subscribe before you leave.